Well, we began this epic adventure in Shanghai, that whore of the Orient. And then it was ultra high speed train, one of the fastest in the world, to Beijing. And in Beijing, the sights included the Great Wall, the Forbidden City, lunch in the hutongs, and so much more. But then, our journey took us to the heart of Mongolia. I can't believe it, I'm here in central Mongolia, on the back of a, a real Mongolian horse. <laughs> People will look up to this uh, statue and say, he did it, I can do it. I'm about to board the Golden Eagle. I'm number Scott. Four? I'm number four, yes. Okay, and I'm Julia and this is Sunny. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. The Golden Eagle, the most beautiful luxury train, rolled on from Mongolia into Russia and to the adventures ahead. It must be the highlight of our trip. Or so far, I mean. <laughs> Work on the train never seems to cease. The staff always attentive. For some guests, there's nothing better than hanging a head out the window as Siberia rolls by. But then everyone has an agenda on this trip. I have two daughters. It's the one daughter, that's the other daughter, and I made a wish for each of them. They're determined that we're going to be very, very large by the time we leave this place. Visiting where I've always wanted to visit. What have you found? Mate, look at the size of these cans. They're huge. Cans of beer? They are huge cans of beer. 7% alcohol. Mate! God, you've been your element. Fantastic. And all the time, the trains are rolling across Siberia. And everywhere we go, there always seems to be music. There's no doubt the Circumbaikal Railway is one of the most extraordinary feats of engineering in the world. In Russia, it's referred to as the golden buckle in the steel belt of the nation. And with the train chugging along at a mere 20 kilometers an hour, which is the limit on this old railway line, it's the best way to feast on the magnificent scenery. Shortly, we're to have a bit of a treat on the locomotive, but in the meantime, everyone's just milling around this very atmospheric little railway siding. But it's really life in the dining car, where all the action is. And it's like a home away from home. <laughs> 
Finally, our train rolls on to Moscow. But our story is far from over. <laughs> Buddhas of the world unite! Look at this, I can suck mine in. <laughs> you can wind the windscreen down so they can... <laughs> they have a ticket cow at the point, nobody knows who is. Then, for our trip to St. Petersburg, whisked across the countryside in another fast train, the Sapsan. In St. Petersburg, we feast on grand palaces and all the delights of this magic city of the north. The Catherine Palace is a never-ending facade. and grandeur. All the way around this central courtyard. Along this one-storied building, uh, this one-storied semicircular building, we used to accommodate ministers, the court, people called the lady. Was there no end to this Extraordinary excess. Railway station, have you? It isn't. No. And what a railway station. <laughs> We've chosen a very good one. The old Imperial Railway Station. Getting a little restoration job. There are more than 60 canals in St. Petersburg, which is why it's known as the Venice of the North. And a great way to see this stunning city is by boat. A fitting finale to our tour together. But really, the big farewell happened at Podvore at Zaska Salem, where much toast and hilarity was enjoyed. To celebrate such an epic journey, 10,000 kilometers across China, Mongolia, Burati, Siberia, the Ural Mountains, the steppes, Tartarzan, and on to Moscow. And finally, St. Petersburg. So, to our happy band of travellers, I say a big thank you, and hope we see each other again somewhere down the line.